بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على مبعوثة رحمة للعالمين نبينا وإمامنا محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبركاته عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليم كثير إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته What is up guys My name is Joshua Welcome to the Ultimate Muslim Man Podcast The show for practicing Muslim men who absolutely despise mediocrity and demand excellence in every single area of their life Bithing Allah by the permission of Allah today I'm feeling pretty good man Alhamdulillah, just uh, knocked out day one of the Striving Muslim Man uh, Syndicate 30 for 30. Um, we can discuss more about that at the end of the show, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But uh, alhamdulillah, we have a, an amazing community of practice Muslim men. And today is the uh, what we call the 30 for 30 challenge. And again, we'll, we'll discuss it more. It's totally free. We'll talk about it at the end, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many brothers in it. And dude, it's just rocking and rolling right now, alhamdulillah. But right now, I want to talk to you about a very serious topic, man. Something I think every single one of us should seriously consider, reflect on, and ask ourselves, you know, um, are we under this threat? And that is the threat of Allah replacing you and me. I would be lemon that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. It's a very serious topic, but it's something that each and every one of us we need to seriously consider, man, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replacing you and me? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plotting against you and me? May Allah protect us with us unknowing. We're, un we're completely unaware of the plot of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, we have his of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah says no one fears the, the plotting of, uh, no one feels safe from the plotting of Allah except the, the disbelievers. You see what I'm saying? So we have to fear Allah. We have hope in Allah, and we have taqwa of Allah at the same time. And so the evidence for this, if you may ask, if you may wonder, what are you talking about, Allah replacing you? In uh, the la very last ayah of Surah Muhammad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعْتَ عَوْدِ مِنَ الْمَنْشَيْتَانَ الرَّجِيمِ وَاللَّهُ الْأَغْنِي وَأَنْتُمُ الْفُقَرَاءُ وَإِنْ تَتَوَلُّوا يَسْتَبْتِلْ قَوْمَ غِيرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُوا أَمْثَالُكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, that Allah is al ghani Allah is totally free of any need whatsoever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need you, he doesn't need me, he doesn't need anything. And it is you, ya slave of Allah, O oh, oh servants of Allah, you and me, who are in need, in dire need of him. When tatawallo, and if you were to turn away from the deen, from the commandments of Allah, from the prohibitions of Allah, from the sunnah of the Prophet you choose your culture over the deen, you choose your own opinions, your own desires over the deen, you turn, you just turn away, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he will replace you with another people and they will not be like you. They won't be like you. They won't turn away from the dhikr. They won't turn away from the reminder. They won't point the finger at other people and say, yeah, those are the ones who are, uh, you know, who Allah's talking about. But I'm good. I'm, man, I'm, I'm righteous, bro. I'm good. I don't need the reminder. Like, it's them. Like, you're the one who is, uh, you know what I'm saying, struggling. You're the one who uh, needs to, you know, step up your game in terms of the dean. But me, I don't need that, bro. I'm praying five times a day. You know what I'm saying? I do my Ramadan once a, once a year. Whatever, bro. Like, psh, I'm good. Are you turning away? You think that's for other than you? And so we have to ask ourselves, man, is, is that the definition of us? Are, are we turning away from the dhikr of Allah? Are, are we possibly being replaced? Because a lot of people, man, a lot of Muslims, dude, they love Dawah channels, dude. They absolutely love Dawah channels, revert stories, and things of that nature, right? But the question becomes, how much of what you have consumed has translated into actions that have taken, you know, basically uh, your dean more seriously, right? Real practical actions in your daily life that you have applied now that have made you take your dean more seriously. Are you just simply watching Dawah stories and uh, Dawah channels, revert stories for entertainment purposes? Are you actually gleaning wisdom and benefit and valu valuable lessons? an insight so that you can take your deen more seriously because dude it's like man are you are you like comfortable standing in front of Allah and saying 
you know, reverts are just so much better than born, born Muslims. I, I really, like, I get irritated with that statement, dude. And perhaps it is a true statement. But why are you comfortable with that? Are you complacent in that? Are you just accepting of that? If you're born a Muslim, born into a Muslim family? Is it something that you're comfortable with? You just say, oh man, you know, reverts are just better than us Muslims. And you just, you just take a seat back. So are you actively um, participating in Allah replacing you? Like you're, you're totally compliant in that. Is that what you want? You want Allah to replace you, bro? You don't want to be of those whom Allah has chosen for his deen? I mean, it's not like you can't achieve the same perceived level of Iman that you think us reverts have, bro. There's nothing special about us. Just keeping it real, dude. There's nothing special about me, nor is there anything special about any other Muslim revert that I've met in terms of Iman that you can obtain. It's just a matter of you listen, you study, and you implement. It's a very simple concept. Okay? You just read the Quran, read the Hadith, get the proper understanding of that Quran, uh, that ayah and that Hadith, and then you implement it. That's very simple. It's not something that takes, you know, again, you to be born into kufr, and be upon misguidance your entire life, and then eventually accepting the truth. You don't have to go through that process. You could just start implementing now. And so it's like, you know, how many of us are complaining about Palestine? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease the, the, you know, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give Palestine success, and the Palestinian success, and victory. Allahumma amin ya rabbil alameen. But we complain about Palestine, we complain about the leaders, we complain about Israel, we, we complain about the United States, we complain about every single thing but ourselves. You know, it's like when an ayah or hadith is mentioned, do you turn away? Do you say, oh man, dude, my man is low. Oh man, I'm struggling with discipline and, mo and motivation. I'm just now motivated. It's like, dude, you have a thousand excuses for yourself. You put reverts on a pedestal. As if it's not challenging for us, as if it's not challenging for us to practice Islam, conduct ourselves as Muslims, look like Muslims, interact with our non-Muslim relatives, and all the propaganda that they have been sh that's been shoved down their throats. As if it's not challenging for us. You say you want to change your life, dude, and you want to you want to help the the suffering of the Ummah, but really, when it comes down to what have you actually done to change? What have you actually done in your daily life to make a difference in this Ummah? And really, if the question is nothing, and if a solution is given to you and you don't take it, then number one, dude, you're just full of it, man. You don't really want to change, dude. You don't want to change yourself, nor do you want to change this Ummah, dude. It's all lip service. It's all talk. It's all clam. You really have no desire to actually change not only yourself, but the situation and the circumstances of this Ummah. Quite frankly, you're just being selfish, to be honest with you. And really, I, I, I'm afraid that if that is your mentality, and that is your current circumstances, that you have no intention of changing, you've done nothing to change, and you have no desire, no desire to change, that it's quite possible that you fall into the ayah that Allah will replace you with the likes of other than you. May Allah protect us. Again, if we go back to when Allah says something in the Qur'an, when the Prophet says something that can be authentically traced back to the Prophet it is authentic, genuine hadith. And it is presented to you. What is your response? Is it, سَمِعْنَا وَطَعْنَا We hear and we obey? Or is it like Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 170, when it is said to them, follow what Allah has revealed. And without a question, the hadith is also a form of revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sunnah of the Prophet is a, a means of revelation as well. 
when it's said to them, when it's said to you, follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, they reply, no, we only follow what we found our forefathers practicing. Ya khi, bro, this is how we do things in our, in our country, bro. This is our culture, man, you know? I understand that's what the deen says, but this is our culture, ya khi. So, are you not <laughs> that very description? That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something, commands something, the Prophet commands something, and it is said to you, follow what Allah has revealed. You say, no, we're only going to follow what our forefathers were practicing. Our jahil forefathers that contradicted the Quran, that contradicted the Sunnah. This practice is shirk. This practice is kufr. This practice is a known, well-known innovation in the deen. Totally contradicts the Sunnah of the Prophet and you go, you know, mashallah, you know, Iman is in my heart, only Allah can judge me. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a good practicing Muslim, blah, blah, blah. Do you not fear that you will be replaced? Do you have no fear of that? Or are you just like, oh man, you know, my whole family, dude, as, as far back as we can go in our gender, you know, in, our, in my lineage, we're all Muslims. So, kalas, no problem, dude. I'm good. I'm golden. See what I'm saying? I'm Muslim, bro. Do you, do you not like really care that much? Or you just ain't that concerned? Or you're just not that worried about it? You're like, that's for, again, that, that, that's for them people over there. But for me, bro, I've been Muslim my whole life, dude. Yeah, Allah's not going to replace me. I'm Muslim. It's something that I think we really all need to uh, consider deeply. So then the question becomes, well, dude, how does one change? How do we actually get our... You know, our stuff in order, for lack of a better word. How do we get together, man? I can, I, I'm going to give you two things. Two things, inshallah. And I, and I mentioned many things, through, you know, on many, 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 many podcasts. I'm going to leave you with two things today. Number one, the principle of avoid the differing and implement what is clear. Avoid the differing between this one and that one. This group and that group, this scholar and this scholar, is he a scholar, is he not a scholar? Dude, avoid the differing and implement what is clear. And here's an example. You have some Muslims who say, you can only make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is it. Dua is for Allah alone. And to make dua to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shirk akbar. This is the stance and position of certain Muslims. You have other Muslims who say the complete opposite, the contrary. That you can make dua to the Prophet Sallallahu through the Prophet Sallallahu and other awliya of, the, uh, of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So if we go back to the ayah, follow what Allah has revealed. If we just go back to, okay, Allah says, follow what Allah has revealed. Please answer this question. Do we find a single ayah in the Qur'an? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses those who make dua to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do we find a single statement of praise, of glad tidings of Jannah, of forgiveness, of pleasure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or do we find the opposite? The second question, does anyone differ over the fact that it is permissible to make dua to Allah? Does anyone differ or the virtue and recommendation to make dua to Allah? Does anyone say, if you make dua to Allah, that you have committed shirk that takes you out the fold of Islam? And you can apply this to every single scenario, dude, where people differ. I'm not going to get into it with you, bro. Is it shirk? Is it not shirk to make dua to the Prophet Sallam? Dude, safeguard yourself. Don't put yourself in that position. There are people who say that it is shirk akbar and it takes you out the fold of Islam. You, and if you're out the fold of Islam and you commit shirk akbar and you die upon that, you're in hellfire forever, bro. There is no hope for you. But does the same apply if you only made dua to Allah? If you only worshiped Allah alone, prayed to Allah, sacrificed for Allah, every single act of worship had a sincere intention for Allah alone? Does anyone disagree? Even the people who say that it's permissible to do these other things, do they say it's impermissible to make dua to Allah? Or that it's not recommended? Or that it's makru? It's, you know, disliked or haram? Do they say these things? 
And if not, then go with what's clear, bro. And if you do that which is clear, then inshallah, you have implemented the ayah that Allah is saying, follow what has been revealed. And inshallah, you don't have to worry about, inshallah, hopefully you have a little bit more yaqeen, a little bit more certainty, a little bit more hope that Allah is not plotting against you. Because Allah has told us in Hadith Qudsi, what can be translated into English, that my servant doesn't come to me with anything, he doesn't come closer to me with anything more than what I've made obligatory upon him. So if you implement that which is obligatory, that in which no one differs, okay, you know, the, the concept of music is a halal haram, we could grab Bukhari, we could grab different resources, and we could prove to you, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that music is haram. But does anyone differ over the virtue of the Qur'an, of reciting the Qur'an, of reading the Qur'an, of reflecting on the Qur'an, of memorizing the Qur'an, of implementing the Qur'an? Does anyone differ on that? And if not, then why aren't you preoccupying your time with that? And avoid the differences. So that's number one. You really want to change? Avoid the differences. Do that which is clear. Implement that which is totally clear. And inshallah, you will be in a good spot, inshallah. Number two, the second way to drastically change your current mindset and circumstances is do you need to surround yourself with positive practice and Muslim men who love Islam, who love the deen, who demand more from themselves, and, and men who actually want, like, dude, it's not just lip service, who actually want to make a difference in this ummah and are actively trying to get better and actively trying to lift other brothers up. And this goes for the sisters as well, because do we need to do this collectively? And I'm speaking to men because that's majority of my audience. And if you step up your game, bro, inshallah, your wife will step up her game. Your children will step up their game because they're seeing you as the example. You're leading by example. You're the role model, dude. You're the one showing them what is and is not acceptable. And you're showing them, look, we don't tolerate me mediocrity, and I'm not asking you of you anything that I'm not demanding of myself, and I'm demanding much more of me than I am of you. My standards are even higher for me than they are of you. So you need to get around these types of people, man. You need to get around people who are positive, dude, who are not naysayers, who are not pessimistic, who are not pointing the finger at everyone but themselves. And saying it's, you know, it's their fault. It's the leader's fault. It's the leader's fault. It's the United States' fault. It's whosoever's fault. We are taking no self-accountability whatsoever. And they're totally content with mediocrity. That That's toxic, man. You need to get away from that, dude. And so, if you're asking yourself, where can I find these type of people? Yeah, that sounds great, Josh. It sounds amazing. It sounds wonderful, dude. Positive practice of Muslim men, mashallah, you know, taking the deen seriously and they also want to get after it in life. They want to be successful in the dunya for the hereafter. They want to make lots of money. Why? So that they can take care of their families. They can provide the best they can for their families. They can make hijrah and inshallah protect them from, uh, you know, not every fitna because fitna is going to be everywhere, but limit the, you know, the amount of fitna inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That they can support orphans, they can build masajids, they can support tabulanum, and all types of amazing things, dude. You know, perform umrah and hajj and sponsor other umrahs for other people, etc. They want to be an amazing husband, amazing father. They want to, they want to have great physical health. They want to be jacked, dude. <laughs> Ripped, rich, righteous, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, dude, we launched a community about a week ago called the Striving Muslim Men Syndicate. And by the tawfiq and the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is already like crushing it. Alhamdulillah. We, we started out, in fact, I'll just show you, inshallah. Hopefully you can see the screen. This is us right here. You see, we're number 506 in personal development. We started this a week ago, and we started at the very bottom. Obviously, number one being the best. We started at 3,000, dude. 3,000 
and now we're at number 506 and we are gaining momentum every single day this number is dropping every single day and again look it's free but look at some of what is going on in the community we have brother shahir alhamdulillah if you look here we have what's called going the extra mile award every single month we will do a go, go the extra mile award because that is one of our core values. You will win cash money. This month it was $100. Next month it could be more. Inshallah. We'll have many other prizes. Inshallah. But that's just one example. For someone who is actively living and exemplifying those core values that we preach all the time, you're getting paid, bro. And again, this is a free community. Alhamdulillah. You ain't got to pay nothing to be in this community. And you can get paid to be in it just for just for betting yourself, just by going the extra mile and just adding more value to the to the brothers around you. Inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have 30 for 30, which is what I was talking about earlier. 30, 30 for 30 challenge. Obviously, myself, alhamdulillah. We got brother Abdullah. We got brother Stephen in the UK. We got brother David, Je uh, David Jennings. We got brother Shahir. We got brother Muhammad. And the list goes on of other brothers who are starting this. 30 for 30, and you can just see how far up everyone is at. Here is the, uh, the 30 for 30. If you guys want to go ahead and join the community and jump in, inshallah, 30 minutes of the Quran a day. W walk one mile a day, phone free. That gets rid of this vice. So we have something spiritual. We have something that helps you get rid of at least, you know, momentarily. And we'll, we'll build up on this to where you can do it permanently and definitely. But inshallah, at least step by step, getting, you know, less time on that screen so that's helping you with vices it's getting you some fresh air getting you some movement we have you can do 30 push-ups 30 sit-ups and 30 pull-ups you can modify this and we discuss all of that in the actual community itself you do this every single day and again we're trying to build brotherhood through competition through challenges and through many other means that you will find in this community so again, encouraging, acknowledging brothers who are living the core values, alhamdulillah, they're getting paid, alhamdulillah, just for living those core values because we appreciate it so much. We are collectively doing challenges together to build that brotherhood because men bond through struggle. We, we bond through competition, through struggle, through mutual challenge. So we're doing that as well. We're doing live calls where we're getting to uh, know one another, benefit from one another, see how we can help one another we're doing arabic and the list goes on of things that we have scheduled and that we're going to do inshallah going forward we have just so many different things going on right now dude where we're gonna inshallah jump on and do active studies uh together inshallah collectively online we're gonna study together and just a number of different the meetups i mean the list goes on bro going to the gym going to the archery range, going to the gun range, going to train mixed martial arts, going to volunteer in the community, and the list goes on. Another thing, another benefit, is that when you join this community, you will get access to the Ultimate Muslim Man Academy. This is a $2,000 program that you will get for free. Four hours, no nonsense, no fluff, A to Z, how to go from mediocre to just unstoppable, inshallah. Going from, the, from someone who complains about lack of discipline, lack of motivation, to being the guy who everyone asks you, bro, how are you so driven? How are you so disciplined? How are you so consistent? How are you so motivated? Bro, how did you do it? And it's four hours, man. That's something that you could listen to in a weekend. You could listen to in a weekend and implement, and you can go back to it and back to it and back to it, dude, until it becomes second nature, inshallah. So you get that for free. And now again, I can't offer this forever, dude. I can't offer this community to be free forever. It has to be paid at some point because the value is going to be too great and we're going to have to be able to limit the amount of people that come in because we need to monitor who is coming in. We can't just let anyone in, man. We got to make sure that you're a good fit for our community and that you're not going to be like a crab in a bucket and, you know, bring others down. But that, inshallah, you're going to rise to the occasion, rise to the standards that we hold for one another. And so, dude, if if you don't implement what I've said of the first principle of just do what is clear, bro, avoid the differing, avoid the difference of opinion, do that, which is crystal clear. 
and you don't take the opportunity to join a free community that has so much benefit in it already, dude. And again, like if we just look at you type in Muslim men again, we've been on this for a week, bro. And look at we're number three. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, walhawla, walakwa, billah, walhamdulillah, rabbal alameen. We're number three in the search results, bro. And we just started a week ago. And that is, that is the manifestation after the, after the grace of Allah of the engagement, the support, the real brotherhood that is happening in this community. So that being said, Allah surely knows best. I hope that this has been of some benefit to you. I hope that I have convinced you to join this community to better yourself. Again, it's free right now. I'm actually paying in order to have this community. It's costing me money for you to join. And I'm fine with that. I'm totally okay with that. What I'm not okay with is you complaining and you're not taking any action. You're complacent. You want to be better. And you decide, you know what? Next year, it's not, not a good time for me. I'm going through a lot. And the excuses go on, on and on and on. I'm not okay with that. I want you to be a part of this. I want you to benefit. I want you to level up. I want you to be a part of this real brotherhood of people, of Muslim men who love Dean and want to be the best that they possibly can in this dunya for the, inshallah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can hopefully, by the permission of Allah, start the process of the victory of this ummah again and ultimately Jannah by the permission of Allah. Subhanakulumma wa bahamnika shadu wa la ilaha la anta staqfiru tu ba'alai Last thing, of course, where can you find this? Go in the first link under the like button in the description. Click the link, apply, answer three basic questions, give your, do an intro, introduce yourself. As you see right here, you have a whole template, bro. You don't know what to say? Just use this template. It's all good, bro. Very simple. Have fun with it. And inshallah, we'll see you inside. That being said, Allah surely knows best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.